Hi again, this is Daniel Ritchie, developer of Howler. And for years and maybe even decades, we've been talking about ways of uh, creating palettes and uh, color, uh, working color sets and themes, that sort of thing that you use to paint a picture using a uh, limited amount of gamut, uh, which helps create a sense of, of world building, a sense of everything living in the same universe, and it also can create mood and that sort of thing. So we will be talking about this in the future. We have new features coming to 2023.3 uh, in a future build. Um, and I will be talking about those later. We have uh, gamut masking tool coming to the new uh, painter's color wheel and that sort of thing. But today I'm going to be talking about primarily um, gamut masking in general and how to uh, create some uh, some uh, gamut mask using a, a color wheel. I just built this real quickly using a, uh, a gradient and I uh, use the selection fader tool and just drag up like that and I picked a gray color here. Let's say I had a, a gray color which I already have selected. I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll clear the uh, deselect that. I'm going to take just a few lines up here across the top like that, make it also gray, and I'm going to go to filter, transform, and warps, and polar, and that will create a uh, a nice um, Roy Gabiv, uh red, orange, yellow, and all that stuff. Uh, color wheel for us. I stored a copy of it over here on the, uh, the dock using uh, the button here store image and we have a copy we can come back to at any point we want to there uh, now when we're doing gamut mapping we want to uh, select a, just a portion of this, the gamut that we have available to us that way we're working in sort of a, a mood or a theme or a, a universe of color that exists in just a particular small range of this and uh as I said, we have some gamut masking tools already built in where you can uh, um, just work on these these small pools of colors, uh, complementary colors, analogous colors, that sort of thing. Uh, very useful built-in tools for doing that. These are the uh, the complements, um, yellow and purple, for example. Uh, we can rotate this to anywhere we want. But um, those are the built-in tools, but this is something we can do and it, it, it could just be something we uh, a color set we made it that we want um, and I'm just gonna go here uh, there's a cat category called paint on alpha I'm just gonna select a big brush and let's say we had, we're working on an image we know we want some oranges and maybe some reds I'm gonna select a little bit of that area there and we know we want sort of bluish green so I'm gonna just take a little swatch through there that's really all we need. And maybe we just need a little, I don't know, something like some purples, like there, but real neutral. And that's all we need. So I'm going to invert this selection like that. And uh, I'm just going to clear everything that we don't need. And this could be, I'm going to use the, the value. Uh, filter to do that just nullify everything that's not in there and I can clear that selection now and this could be a color pick in our in, in and of itself right here like like I said earlier we can store this over here and we can use the the little uh, turkey baster tool to pick colors directly from there and that's something that would be fine but another thing we could do is like formalize this and save it as a uh, as a well or a, 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 a set of uh, swatches and that way we can come back to it like in the future uh, a thousand times in the future if we need to. If we were painting some, some some graphics for cartoons or something where we needed it to all look like it lives in the same the same universe, the same uh, landscape or something. And it all has to have sort of the same theme, the same mood. And we can just formalize this into a well and we can save that later. So what we do is go to color and um, color swatch builder and arranger. There's a nice uh, button here called Build Switch, Build Swatch from Image. It'll mostly ignore the blacks. It'll just treat that as a single well. 
click on that it generates that we see the greens we see the purples and we see the reds in there and uh, we have some tools here like if there's something we don't like like we don't need the black we can just go ahead and copy like something from another color and put it there or whatever we can create a gradient say this green we don't like that green there we can just uh, do a blend from this color to this color and then i'll get rid of that for us that sort of thing um so there it is uh, we see it over here there's um if we go back there there's uh let's see there's a button to uh, save the color swatch and that sort of thing and we can use that at any point and uh, there's like a forward and backward button for just rotating between all these different uh, color wells that we've saved and that's about it so that's just uh some things i wanted to talk about and um introduce you to the concept of gamut masking uh great uh, opportunity to go out and look at the videos that people are doing it's not just computer and digital but people using uh, uh, traditional paints are doing this as well so uh, i know the technique's been around for a number of years and uh yeah we are uh not only finally catching up with it but we have in fact been uh, pushing the idea of working with a limited gamut for at least three decades now. So, uh, in let's see, also 2004, we introduced the uh, uh, the concept of um, pigment profiles, trying to save two birds with one stone. Uh, not only uh, getting uh, tools like complementary and triads and then split complements and all that stuff in there, but also um, being able to work with a color picker that is based on red, yellow, and blue instead of red, green, and blue, which is more consistent with the, uh, the, the artistic uh, model for uh, understanding color harmony. And, uh, and like I said, two birds with one stone. It also let us uh, work with these uh, limited palettes and remap them into a, a color wheel. Uh, but now we have gamut masking tools that instead of remapping the entire... Uh, the entire color wheel with just the limited colors. We now have one that just lets us mask out those things. Uh, both, uh, both ideas have merit. We stand by uh, pigment profiles and color themes. Um, those are tools we've had for a long time, but this is a new way of uh, working in Howler and it has some benefits like uh, you have a better understanding of how all the colors work together because we haven't actually changed anything here. We've only mapped out the parts we don't want. Uh, and it's uh, another benefit is we can create these, these profiles uh, on the fly because we can rotate these and that sort of thing. So we're not limited to, uh, like I said, with color themes where you build a, uh, a theme um, using, say, these uh, web colors or pigment uh, pigments based on uh, real world colors, that sort of thing. Um, but that takes quite a while to set up. But with the, the masking, it, it only takes a second to rotate this. If, say, we wanted um, some additional colors, we can just rotate it around. Or we can just go ahead and pick up the color we want. We, we, don't, um, we don't force you to uh, only work in this area. That's just there for your guidance. So um, that's about all for now. Thanks for watching, and talk to you later.